very much for the interview. Uh, how the show is going on? And what are you displaying in the show? Can you uh, please uh, inform us about these details? Sure, love to. Uh, first of all, the show is going very well. It's, it's interesting. I've been coming to IDEF now for, well, I think since 2001 or 2002 time frame when it was initial, when it was in Ankara, and to see it grow every year has been quite remarkable. And in fact, I had I had even teased a little bit with uh, Murat Bayar about moving it from Ankara to Istanbul, and I I felt like it needed to stay in Ankara because that's where the customers were all the time. And I was worried that if it came to Istanbul, we'd have a hard time being able to meet with the Air Force and with the military as well as SSM because everybody was in Ankara. Um, but what has turned out is this has become much more than just a country show. It's become a major defense show that's become much more regional, many more countries. I think it's grown every year. Our ability to interface with not only the Turkish government but other governments as well has expanded. And this show is becoming a centerpiece for us now each year, every other year for Pratt & Whitney. So overall I've been extremely pleased to see what's happened and I think whoever made the decision to bring it to Istanbul has made a good decision. Um, as far as what we've, uh, our presence here, uh, we've also continued to grow that over the years. Uh, the very first time we were, we were here, we had a small little booth like you see on the sides in the show, uh, maybe one or two graphics and uh, we, we were very close to Alp Aviation at the time so they, they showed us what to do and how to do things. And then we slightly, slowly moved up uh, a little bit more. And over the last several years, we've, we've worked with Sikorsky very, very closely. And as you know, Sikorsky is a sister company of Pratt & Whitney, both of us working under the United Technologies Corporation. Uh, so Sikorsky and Pratt & Whitney have, have now joined forces and we share space on the stand and we share sponsorships as well. We're a little bit larger on footprint than we've had before and a little bit closer uh, in proximity to some of our customers that, that are displaying as well. In addition to that, we have continued to grow our relationship with Alp Aviation as well as Calicalip. And so as you go to both Calicalip and Alp Aviation, you will see evidence of the relationship with Pratt & Whitney. Even with TAI, there is some relationship that has grown with TAI Two years ago at IDEF, we signed a memorandum of understanding with TAI, you may remember that, on looking at um, moving forward into an engine assembly and checkout capability in Turkey, as well as an F-135, a JSF engine overhaul and repair activity. So as you go to the different stands, you can now start to see a little bit more of a Pratt & Whitney presence. Uh, this year, we even went a little bit further. And because of the joint venture that we established with Kala Kalip, we actually have our own stand. We have a Kala Pratt & Whitney stand this year, which is probably three times bigger than the first original Pratt & Whitney stand that we had in Ankara so many years ago. Uh, so it clearly has become a very important part of, of our business and it's a very critical piece of of our way to reach out to the customer and have meaningful conversations, not only with Turkey, but with uh, a broader selection of countries. Uh, could you please inform us about the activities that you performed over the years in Turkey? Sure. Um, you know, it, it goes way, way back, um, I think to 2000, probably 2000 or 2001. And at that time, uh, I was asked to come and was given the opportunity to work on the JSF program. And I remember specifically one day getting a telephone call that a company from Turkey was coming to Pratt & Whitney and the company was Alp Aviation. And at the time, the senior, uh, Tunjur Alpata's father was still alive. And he came uh, with, with his son and they came to Pratt & Whitney because they were visiting Sikorsky at the time, since they were a partner with Sikorsky. And so we, did, we, we had a conversation and we learned a little bit about what they did there. We were starting the JSF program and we knew Turkey was going to join the JSF program. 
And so Pratt and Whitney knew very little about Turkey. And our first exposure really was was the Alpata family. And we had a series of trips back and forth. And and um, because they built rotors and shafts for Sikorsky, we were able to identify a, a, a part on the JSF engine that that they might be able to compete for. And so we started off with a very modest piece of hardware and they won. They had very, very competitive pricing. Uh, they won that competition and what has happened since then is we have evolved with rotating hardware um, on the front end, the front side of the engine without aviation. And then that grew into another relationship with Calicalip and we're doing and we're starting now to do fabrications, uh, hot forming and bracketry, sheet metal work with our Kala facility. And so it's, uh, it's a pretty extensive amount of work. If I look across all of the JSF partner countries, Turkey has got, um, is, is by far one of the largest industrial contributors to the F-135 program. The only country that uh, that exceeds Turkey in its industrial capability to this engine is the United Kingdom, and that's largely because Rolls Royce does all of the Stovall lift components for for the Stovall airplane, and so that's a big piece of the contribution that we get from the United Kingdom. If you were to remove that from there, Turkey would be the largest of of all of our uh, industrial activity, and and that's. That has nothing to do with the number of airplanes Turkey's going to buy. It has everything to do with the capability that companies like Alp Aviation and like Kalakalip bring. In addition, we have a large effort going on with Elmo, Falker Elmo, down in Izmir. Falker Elmo does a lot of our wiring harnesses for the JSF engine, and they do them here in Turkey as well. So we have Kalakalip, we have Falker Elmo, we have Alp Aviation, and we continue to have a very robust dialogue with TAI uh, as we look forward to the future for engine assembly and disassembly as well as MRO capabilities. What are the other companies along besides these companies that you cooperate with? Those are that's pretty much our focus here in Turkey. What you what you tend to find is that doing jet engine work is very different than doing airplane work. There, there tends to be um, hundreds of airplane companies that, that can do airplane structures and can, can cut the metal necessary for the airplanes or do some of the composites for the airplane. Uh, on engines, there's far fewer. We use much more difficult materials. Uh, they're much more difficult to machine. Uh, we, ho we have much closer and tighter tolerances that we have to hold uh, when, we, when we cut those parts. And so the capital investment, as well as the technology transfer capabilities, as well as, um, as, well as um, just the expertise and the education levels, that, that the engineering methodology that we need to have, um, that's a large investment for a lot of companies. And so generally what happens is there's a smaller group of companies that are working in the jet engine industry. I think we have four of the best that we work with and, uh, and we've been highly successful with that model. Uh, actually, uh, new investment, your investment uh, with Kale, uh, Iro, it will be has been the milestone uh, of uh, Fred Whitney in Turkey. Uh, so uh, what can you say, say about uh, this investments and can you tell us about the structure and formation of this uh, investment? Sure, I'd love to. Um, and that's exciting for us. So if, if, if you go back probably, oh, I want to say it's almost 10 years now, but maybe it's a, it's a little bit less, eight years or so, uh, Osman Okia was, was at Pratt & Whitney. We had already started a relationship and he and I actually had an, a meeting in my office at Pratt & Whitney in Connecticut. And he had an idea of, is there something that, that, that Pratt & Whitney thought that we could form a partnership in Turkey on? And it was Osman's uh, original idea. And so we talked for many years back and forth, and that ultimately became the Kala Pratt & Whitney joint venture. 
and so he should he he should be very applauded uh, for for his vision and what he was able to do. We were able to find a very good core piece of business that that was beneficial not only to Pratt and Whitney but also to Kala but also to the government of Turkey. So that partnership is a 51% ownership by the Kala family and 49% by Pratt and Whitney. So the structure is. Osman is, is the senior board member. He's the chairman of our board. And then we have three board members from Pratt & Whitney and three additional board members from Kala. Um, the business is, is set up down in Izmir. We, uh, it was largely developed for F-135. And as you know, we had expected a lot more F-135 volume, but because the production levels have been much lower than we anticipated, we have, uh, we have done a very good job of, of winning and competing for commercial work. So work on commercial engines, not only with Pratt & Whitney, but with Pratt & Whitney Canada as well. Uh, we're also talking with uh, United Technologies Aerospace Systems on trying to win some work. Because we have a business, and whatever happens with the JSF, our objective, both Kala's objective and Pratt & Whitney's objective, is to grow that business and to continue to grow that business so that it can continue to thrive and grow and become a major presence in Turkey. We have quite a bit of land in Izmir so we can actually expand should we choose to. Uh, we are, right now we're working out of a, a out of a leased space, <laughs> but that space now over the course of the last eight months, we've gone from one machine to a completely full uh, leased area we're making production hardware now for a number of different engines. If you go by the stand over to the Kala stand right behind it, you'll see the Kala Pratt & Whitney stand and you can actually see some of the first hardware that, that they've started to produce. Uh, we are now, I would say, 85% done with the construction of our new building down there. I think we'll have all the building completed by, hopefully by the end of June and we will start to move equipment in and get the shop laid out uh, and get ourselves prepared to go into ideally a grand opening at the latter part of this year. Uh, do you plan to make some uh, export uh, to the third countries with the cooperation of uh, Turk the other Turkish companies or through buy or investments in Izmir? Is there any plan like that? Well, anytime Pratt & Whitney goes in and has a relationship with a supplier, um, the way we tend to work that is that supplier or that partner, we look at them as a global supplier. So when we buy hardware from Calicola, whether it's for the military, whether it's for the F-135, or whether it's for our commercial engines, or whether it's for Pratt & Whitney Canada, that hardware goes to third countries, to third party countries. So it'll come to Pratt & Whitney and then Pratt & Whitney will put it into engines that will go to other countries or to other customers. Or that material will come in and it'll become spare parts for other customers, whether they're commercial customers or military customers. That same holds true for Alp Aviation. The same will hold true for Elmo. So we do not, we do not have partnerships and supplier relationships for just one country. So as soon as you come into our supply chain, you are a supplier for third parties. That's great. Uh, what about your future plans in Turkey, your interesting areas, interesting programs? I think right now our, our primary, we have a couple primary focuses. Uh, certainly the Joint Strike Fighter is extremely important to, to Pratt & Whitney, to Lockheed Martin, and I think to the government of Turkey as well. Not only is it important to those entities, but it's extremely important to Kala Kalip. It's extremely important to uh, Alp Aviation and to Elmo, but also to TAI and all the companies that, that were involved in that, that ceremony at Lockheed Martin today. Um, it is a good, good relationship for, for Turkey. It's a good relationship for everybody that's been on the program. In many ways, when you look at the industrial comp contributions here in Turkey, you could almost look at the JSF as an indigenous fighter because there is so much of this airplane that's being built in Turkey. And it's a national enterprise. 
And so as we look at this national enterprise, we, we at Pratt & Whitney sit back and say, okay, what is the next step for us in Turkey? And the next step for us, I think, is to, to find a way. We know that Turkey has a strong aspiration to do engine assembly and disassembly in, in a production manner. And we also know that Turkey has a strong aspiration to do overhaul and repair of the F-135 engine, not only for Turkey, but for a broader region. So what, what we're doing is working very closely with the U.S. government. We're working very closely with Tur the Turkish government and with Turkish industry to see if we can't find an acceptable solution that we can go forward to establish that capability here in Turkey. Thank you very much for the interview. Would you like to add some message for our readers? Sure. Um, you know, I think to me the, the biggest message to the readers is that uh, we're, we're all in the F-35 program together. The F-35 is not a U.S. program. It's not uh, a singular Turkish program. It's not a singular Dutch program or United Kingdom program. Uh, it, is a, it is a program that we are all working on together. And, and we are all working on a piece of history right now. This is one of the greatest airplanes that will ever be produced. And none of us will succeed without each other. There's a huge presence here in Turkey. There are thousands of men and women working on the Joint Strike Fighter, not only for Turkey, but for all the customers. Uh, and we all have to work very effectively together going forward. If we do that well, and I'm sure we will, uh, we have the opportunity to safeguard all of our populations in the future. We have the opportunity to continue to work well together uh, as, as good collaborative uh, partners should. So, you know, I, I think the enthusiasm that I have for the JSF program really gets back to all the men and women that are working on things. And, and the people of Turkey should always keep in mind that uh, we're doing some great, great things together, not only on this program, but with all the technology transfer that we're, that we're working on together. And we're going to grow very, very well together going forward. The other thing that I would like to say is that I happen to be retiring. Uh, and so for me, I, I've had the opportunity to work with Turkey now since 2000. Uh, when we first started, we had absolutely no presence in Turkey, none whatsoever. And many people at Pratt & Whitney said that we, would, that we should probably not spend too much time trying to work in Turkey because our competitor had such a strong presence here in Turkey. I found it to be quite the opposite. I found Turkey to be extremely open. Uh, I found Turkey to have great technology, great manufacturing capability, and probably above all, a great optimism and very true to core principles of integrity and honesty and doing the right thing. And so for, for Pratt & Whitney, it became pretty easy when we ran into companies like Calicalip and we ran into companies like Alp Aviation to get started. And I would also say that uh, for me it was always great to know that SSM, Murat Bayar in particular, was always there encouraging us. He never made us feel that we didn't have an opportunity. He always helped us try different things and have different opportunities. And he always rewarded us when we did well. And um, you know, I think that's another sign of, of being open and honest and being fair. And those are a lot of things that we found here that I have found over the years. And, uh, and so I have a, while I'm excited about leaving, I have a heavy heart of leaving Turkey. Um, I, I do have the pleasure and the privilege to turn over my responsibilities to Mr. Tyler Evans. And Tyler's gonna continue to take us over the next 10 years, I, I can only imagine, uh, where we will be in another 10 years uh, in Turkey. I wish you best of luck in your new life and Thank in your you. new position. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.